choosing a topic of your speech. So the objective of the presentation is to learn how to write a topic for a public speech. Now, these are some of the considerations. The first consideration in choosing the topic of your speech is you should know yourself and you should know your audience. By knowing yourself, we mean that you should know your interests. For example, the topics that I asked you to share with me, I was hoping that those are the topics you must be interested in. But that is the first most basic step in choosing a right topic for your speech, that you should know what kind of person you are, what are your interests, and what are the topics you would like to speak on. But then secondly, know your audience as well, who you are going to speak with, what is their intellectual level, what is the level of their knowledge, what kind of topics they might be interested in, what kind of people those are? Are these common masses? Are those uh, experts in communication? Are those businessmen? Are those politicians? In fact, if you know about your audience, only then you can choose a right topic for them. You can further understand the importance of knowing yourself and your audience through these three points. Number one, appeal. Choose a topic which has appeal for your audience, by which we mean a topic for which you can either gain sympathy of your audience or you can motivate your audience or you can uh, excite your audience. If you have a topic which, for example, is too technical and you are speaking on that for common masses, then probably your speech is going to be almost a failure. Why? Because the common masses, of course, there are a lot many people in there and they have a variety of interests. They have a variety of intelligence levels. Therefore, your topic, which is highly technical, and on which you have spent a lot of time will not make any impact on that audience because the topic is too technical to be even understood by those common masses. Therefore, the first point is you should think in terms of will your speech make an appeal, an emotional appeal, an intellectual appeal to the audience at all? And if you think that, that the topic that you are going to choose will not make an appeal to the audience, then drop that topic. Second consideration in choosing your topic is appropriateness. So you should think if the topic that you are going to choose is appropriate for the kind of audience that you have chosen. So there are topics which are too formal, there are topics which are too informal. For example, if you are going to present the case of uh, Kashmiri uh, struggle for their independence, if you want to present their case on a UNO forum or on a UNO sub forum, your tone your topic needs to be as appropriate, appropriate as possible. In fact, it should be as formal as possible. On the other hand, if you are going to speak on the, if you are going to speak in front of uh, a student assembly, for example, then you have to rethink your topic and make a topic like that it should be appropriate for that kind of audience now if you are going to speak on the uh, struggle of kashmiri people uh, for their independence in front of the 
student audience, for example, probably they won't be understand, they won't be able to understand the legal complications that you want to explain for them. Finally, ability. This is about you. Do you have the ability to speak on the topic that you have chosen? Are you sufficiently interested in that topic? Have you in the past uh, spoken on that topic or do you have sufficient experience of dealing with that topic or have you been studying about that particular topic? You know, think of all those things when you decide about your topic. So check if your topic has the appeal, check if your topic is appropriate for the kind of audience and check if you have ability to speak on that particular topic. Now, how to choose a topic? After considering these three elements, which I just discussed in the previous slide, the next question is how to choose the topic, how to write, or write it down, how to produce the topic. Now, these are three strategies they all can be uh, clubbed together as brainstorming. They are all brainstorming strategies. They help us to choose a right topic for ourselves, for a public speech. First strategy is called word association. So you need to have a, a, a copy and a pencil to apply this strategy. In fact, for all these three strategies, you need a copy or pencil, and, uh, or you need uh, you know, a screen and of course keyboard to write. So word association. You, when, for example, I assigned you to bring me a topic to make your speech on. If you want to use this first strategy, word association, then you need to think, what is the first word that comes to your mind related to that particular topic? Write down that word and then write the second word that comes to your mind in connection with the first word. And then write the third word that comes to your mind in connection with the second word. Keep writing words in this manner. Okay. What are you doing is you are in fact thinking of the word associated with each other after you have spent some time and you feel that you have been exhausted uh, by this exercise and you have written down all the words which you which could come to your mind related to a topic uh, on a particular speech or about a topic of a particular speech, that is where you should stop. Now, this is the first strategy. Uh, but before I tell you how to finalize the topic, let's understood the sec understand the second strategy as well and then the third. And then I'll come back to the point how to finalize one among the topics. The second strategy is called clustering. Now, while in word association, you move from one word to the second and then second to the third and third to the fourth, and we make a kind of chain of words. In the case of clustering, we use a different uh, strategy, we, we use a different method, and that is that we write down the first topic that comes to our mind. We circle it, and then we all write down all those ideas that come to our mind connected only with that particular topic. This is the second strategy. And then finally, the third and the last strategy is called free writing. In case of free writing, we do not write just the words. Rather, we write complete sentences. For some people, this strategy works better. So what do you want to speak on? Instead of falling for words, instead of choosing words, you write the sentences, full sentences. OK, this is what I want to speak on. You write and write and write without thinking much about it. After you have written a paragraph or so, you give it a reading. Now, coming back to the point how to 
finalize a topic or, or, or how to select one topic. Now, if you are on the first strategy, which is word association, and you have made a chain of the words, and all those words are connected together, now your job is to condense all those words into one single word or one single phrase. How can you associate all those words together to create one idea out of all those words that you put down? Similarly, for clustering, you do exactly the same thing, which is you have all those words that you wrote down uh, related to a particular topic, but of course they are too many and you cannot use all of them as one single topic. So once again, you distill them, all of them into one single idea. Now, of course, the question that you might ask is that uh, in the case of word association or in the case of clustering, you have written too many words and some of those words could be totally disconnected with the other words. So what you should do, my answer to this question is, you should look for the majority of the words which are connected with each other. Keep them and the words which single out or stand out to be disconnected, simply cross them out. Okay, so you have with yourself just those words which are in majority, which are in connection with each other. You have to put them together to create one phrase out of them. And the ideas single ideas so for example you wrote in word association you wrote 10 words in total and you notice that seven of them are connected with each other but three of them seem to be totally irrelevant then cross those three out and condense the seven into one single phrase similarly for clustering you wrote a topic and you put a circle around that topic and then you wrote your ideas around it. Again, you wrote 10 ideas and four of them seem to be totally irrelevant. Cross those four out and take the majority of them, which is six, okay? And then condense them together into one single idea, okay? But of course, naturally, it is quite obvious if all of them are not connected with each other, then you haven't done the exercise right. You need to redo it, okay? The idea is when you apply word association or when you apply clustering, you should try to think of every second idea which is connected with the previous idea, all right? That is the only way the strategy will work. So you have to make sure right from the beginning that every second idea that you are writing should be connected with the previous ideas that you have written down. Finally, free writing. In the case of free writing, you have written the paragraph uh, using the free writing, give it a second reading. Now, you don't have single words over here, so you are not going to cross out anything, but now your job is to narrow down that, that whole paragraph into one single phrase. And then that one single phrase is going to be your topic. So basically the topics that you have been choosing uh, in recent past for various speeches or paragraphs or you know things of that kind. In fact, you knowingly or unknowingly already apply this strategy, okay? Even if you don't use paper and pen to do it, you still think about the topics, okay? There are ideas which come to your mind and then you put those ideas together into one uh, topic. But now for the speech, uh, I'm asking you to do this exercise, uh, you know, on purpose, do it deliberately, do it consciously. You should be aware of it that you are doing it and you have to do it on paper. Okay. Just to have the topic is not enough. Why? Because just the topic will not give a direction to your topic or to your speech. For example, uh, if you are going to speak on the impact of social media on the youth. Now this topic, the way I put it, 
the impact of social media on youth does not give a direction to your speech. Why? Because there are so many ways to deal with this topic. Therefore, in addition to the topic, you need a thesis statement. Th what will thesis statement do? Thesis statement will give a direction to your topic. So instead, of, not instead of, but you know, keep this topic impact of uh, social media on youth, but then think of a thesis statement in addition to this topic. Now, one thesis statement, example of thesis statement could be that uh, social media is uh, uh, making the youth of our times much more successful as compared to the youth of pre-social media times. Or in very simple words, you can say that uh, social media has a positive impact on the youth. Now, if I say this, then I have given a direction to my speech. Now, my speech is going to be the positivity of the social media. All right. But then, of course, there are negativities of social media as well. Some people can speak on that as well. Some people can generally speak on uh, the role of social media in accelerating education. Okay, uh, so there are so many ways to approach this topic. You have to give a direction to your speech with the help of your thesis statement. Now, your thesis statement must be uh, a declarative statement. That means it should declare, it should tell what the topic is about. Just like I just told it, that social media uh, has a positive impact on youth. So I'm declaring something, has a positive impact, kind of claim I'm making. It should be a complete sentence. You might have noticed that the sentence I spoke was a complete sentence. Use specific language, not vague generalities, okay? Now, uh, in fact, the sentence I have just spoken uh, in fact, it does not have very specific language. We should make it a little more specific. For example, I said, social media has a positive impact on youth. Now this word positive is not specific. It is a very general word, okay? So we, we probably should think deeper and come up with a more specific word. So you, for example, can say uh, social media is increasing connectivity among the students or among the youth, all right? So now this is a specific language that I'm going to talk about the connectivity uh, that is possible because of social media, uh, that is possible among youth because of social media, okay? So be specific what exactly you want to talk about. And then this is what we learned in paragraph writing as well that your thesis statement should have a single idea in it, all right? And then finally, you should reflect the considerations of the audience as well, okay? So write a thesis statement, uh, which should have some appeal for your audience as well. Your audience should kind of have interest in that particular thesis statement, the way you are going to put it to them. So uh, to sum it, all, sum it up all, uh, in order to write your topic, you should think about your own strengths. You should think about the interest of your audience as well. You should think about the level of your audience as well. And then while choosing the topic, you should apply one of these strategies, word association, clustering, or free writing. Just to have a topic is not enough. You need to have a thesis statement as well. Make a statement, which is clear, declarative, uses specific language, and has just one idea in it. Now, this is the end of this presentation.